have this money to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Father for
today's chronicle is titled God's name is your safety. God's name is your safety. Amen. Exodus 3, um, verses 13 to 14. Read. But Moses protested. If I go to the people of Israel and tell them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. They will ask me, what is his name? Then, what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Amen. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Hallelujah. When Moses wanted to know God's name, God revealed himself as I am who I am. This name reflects something of God's nature. The Hebrew for God's first name can also be translated as I shall be what I shall be. God's Hebrew name was written Consonants, Yahweh. This was pronounced as Yahweh as the original Hebrew did not make use of any vowels. The Jews had such a deep reverence for the name of God that they did not say it out loud, but rather used the Hebrew word for Lord, Adonai, when the name Yahweh appeared in the scriptures. The names of pagan gods usually reveal something about their characteristics. God differs from all other gods. When God revealed this name to Moses, he proclaimed how great he is. He distinguishes himself from the lifeless idols as the living God, the God who is. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. Amen. The God will run to him and they are saved. That is Proverbs 18 verse 10. If you worship the living God, the God who is, you can be sure that his name will also be a place of safety for you. Amen. We can rise for declaration this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father,
we acknowledge you as the one and only true God. We acknowledge Jesus Christ as being your Lord and Savior. He is the Messiah, the anointed one, the Holy One, the one whom, O oh God, you have sent into the world to Lord to purchase our redemption. We thank you this morning that because of the blood of Jesus, we have been set free. By the blood of Jesus, we have been washed, we have been cleansed. We gather in this place, O oh Lord God, to hear your precious word. Because, O oh Lord God, it is the washing of water by the word of God that gives us clarity of mind and thought. I pray this morning, O oh Lord, that your word will find an entrance into our hearts. I pray this morning, O oh Lord God, for everybody that is under the influence of the service this morning. I pray, Lord, by your spirit, O oh God, that you will touch the people. I pray that you touch them. I pray, O oh Lord God, that you refresh and renew your people with strength this morning. Your word decrees and declares, O oh God, that those who wait upon the Lord shall be their strength. So this morning, O oh Lord, I decree that strength comes to the people of God. This morning, O oh God, I decree that life comes to the people of God. There is life, O oh Lord God, in your word. And Lord, I thank you that that life will be part of Lord God. To everybody, Lord God, to sleep. Don't join us, O oh Lord God, via whatever media or platform. I thank you that life will be imparted to them. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that faith comes this morning by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you this morning, O Lord, that our hearing be amplified to the voice of the Spirit of God. That our hearing be amplified to the things of God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O precious Holy Spirit, that you are our divine connection with the Father this morning, for our divine connection with heaven this morning. We thank you, O precious Holy Spirit, that you will move upon the people of God this morning, that you breathe upon them this morning. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, I pray even for the word as it will come forth. Lord, it's not the word of a man. O oh Lord God, I pray this morning that you will breathe life into your word and breathe upon your people the breath of life this morning. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, O God, that the broken hearts that need mending will be mended this morning, that there will be, Lord God, restoration, O Lord God, of the complete man, mind, body, and spirit, by the word of God, in the name of Jesus, O Lord, we thank you this morning, O God, we look, O Lord God, to the promises of God, because we know, O Lord, that your promises are sure, we know, O Lord, that all your promises in Christ Jesus have they a yea, and in Christ Jesus have they a amen, they are so be it, O God. So this morning as the people of God, Lord God, we say amen, so be it to unto us. Be it according, be it done to us, according to your word, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you this morning, O Lord God. In Jesus' blessed name, and the people of God said, Amen, amen, amen. Come and give the Lord praise in this house. Hallelujah. Somebody shout the name of Jesus in this place.
presence is fullness of joy and his right hand side, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Amen. And we praise God this morning. Well, praise God. This morning, I'm going to call up Sister Monsa, who's going to do the ministry of the offering for us. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
they form a, a cycle. It's not new, it's just that the name is new. But it's not new. Yes, yes. So for us, we know that there is mm. the weight. Hallelujah. Which covers us in all whatever. Whatever that is going to happen tomorrow, next day, whatever. We are being covered. So okay, to, to trust in the weight and do the weight and trust God fully. So let's first start trusting with our finances. Then we'll see God at work in us. I'm repeating also that if we are willing and obedient, we shall eat the food of the meat. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your weight. We thank you, Lord. We come before you, Lord, with our time and moments. We thank you, Lord, we you give us God the blessing and an example. Lord, you see you, Lord. I speak that blessing over every individual and their families. Right now, Lord, they come in the church. We thank you, Father, that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. I thank you, Lord, that you know each and every need that is presented in this place. I thank you, Father, that you shall supply. You shall supply Lord, all their needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. We repent. Let us give us the honor, Lord, in giving. We surrender, Lord, unto you. Forgive us. As from now on, Lord, we are making a quality decision that we put you first in our lives. In everything that we do. In everything that we do. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, dear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you, eternal Father, for your grace which saves. The grace of God which saves, which has appeared unto all mankind. By grace I have we been saved, O God. What about the works, O Lord, lest any man should boast? But we have been born again freely, O Lord, by the grace of God this morning. I thank you, Father, and as you see us this morning, you see us, O Lord, through the blood done for us, what the blood has purchased for us. We have been redeemed, O Lord God, from the curse. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, that no longer, O oh Lord, do we suffer with the wages of sin and death, for we have been redeemed and set free by the grace of God. We thank you that we now have eternal life in Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is an eternal word, an everlasting word, never changes. And just like you, Father God, you don't change. You the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we just thank you this morning. I just pray this morning, Lord, that you will touch your people. Touch them, Lord, I pray in a special way. In the name of Jesus. I yield myself, O oh Lord God, to the power of the Holy Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. I say, Holy Spirit, work through me this morning, in me and through me, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord of God, for the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ, your Son. With by the gospel of all that we have been saved, by the gospel of God we have been free. In Jesus' blessed name, God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Jesus, well, good morning, everybody, once again. And, uh, I trust you all blessed, and I trust you had an awesome week. I know some of you are already on holiday. Whilst you're on holiday, remember God doesn't go on holiday. Hallelujah. Praise God. For some folk, I don't know, as soon as they go on holiday, their faith goes on holiday. Your faith should never go on holiday. Amen.
back. So wherever you go to, if you're going on holiday, remember that God is with you. Amen. Uh, this morning, I just want to speak from my heart. Amen. And um, there's many things that we have faced, I think, as the world at large for the year 2020. Amen. Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this morning I want to share from the heart. And that is from the word of God that I want to share with you. That God is a creator. Don't forget that. That's what I want to share with you this morning. Don't forget that God is a creator. He is the creator. Only one creator. And I want to pick up in the book of Genesis, chapter number one. And verse number one begins as such. It says, in the beginning, God did what? Come on, talk to me. It's a two-way thing here. The Bible says, in the beginning, God did what? God created. Genesis 1 verse 1, right there in your Bible, the very first book of the Bible, the very first verse of the Bible, the very first words of the Bible, the Bible tells us, in the beginning, God created. In other words, God gave form to. In other words, God shaped. God brought into existence. God brought into being the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, hallelujah, God created the heavens and the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are preparing, I shared with you, less than two weeks, we are entering a new year. It will be a new beginning for many of us. Hallelujah. Hence, my message this morning is, may I remind you that we serve a God who is the creator of all things. As the Bible says, in the beginning, God created. Now, you don't have to wait for the 31st of December for, for it to be a beginning for you. You don't have to do that. Your beginning can begin today. It's a mindset. It's, 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 it's just a shift of mindset. You find many people uh, at the beginning of this year, they began the year with resolutions. Let me tell you, resolutions, it's good to set yourself goals, but let me tell you, resolutions is something that you are resolved to do, but if God is not in that, you'll never achieve it. It begins with God. Hence, you find the Bible says, in the beginning, God created. So you got you got to put God first. If you want things to come right in your life, get your priorities right. Put God first. You're going to the store. Put God first. God, go with me. You're preparing to eat a meal. I don't care how hungry you are, but put God first. Thank God for the meal. Bless the meal. You may find you're having maybe uh, digestive problems. It's probably because you don't pray when you eat. It's probably because you're not thankful for what you have in front of you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Put God first. When you go to work, put God first. You see, when you put God first, you what you are doing, you're opening the door to opportunity. Because when you put God first, you're setting a door before God that you have opened for Him to work. For Him to go before you. 
And when God is before you, in other words, when God is in front of you, nothing can harm you. So the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Goes on to say that the earth was without form. There was no form to the earth. There had no form. There was nothing on it. It was without form and it was empty. It was void. Can you imagine the earth, what it looked like being empty? The earth without form. Just think of this. For years, um, you know, in the beginning, people thought the earth was flat. Until gradually, as time went on, they realized that the church is, uh, the, uh, the earth, rather, the earth is a ball, it's round. I just think of this we are on this ball. You try standing on a ball. You try standing on a ball, you fall, you lose balance. But just think of how God created this earth. That, yes, it's round, and we're walking and looking on this ball, but none of us fall into space. You see, God, that's the wisdom of God. But scientists today are still trying to figure out how this whole thing works. But We'll never get to the end of that because God in His wisdom created the earth as such. So the Bible says that the earth was without form and empty and void. And watch this, darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God was moving. And then the Bible says, then God sent. Then God sent. There, there came a point where God spoke. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. In the story of creation, it's such a beautiful story. Because here we see the triune God. What God? We find God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. At the beginning of creation, creating. God the Son is the Word. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. Watch this. It was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Wow. Hallelujah. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning was the first day. Brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you something. That the God we serve, He is the Creator. We find that at the beginning of John's Gospel, we're going to go there in a bit, but we find also in Matthew 4, um, we find in Matthew and Luke where Jesus is being baptized. Let's just go quickly to Matthew's Gospel. Keep your finger there in Genesis. Matthew's Gospel. Praise God. Matthew's Gospel. Sorry, it's Matthew 3, rather. Matthew chapter 3. Now this is Jesus getting baptized by John the Baptist. Now verse 16, when he, Jesus, had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. Watch this. Jesus came up immediately from the water. Jesus. We read in Genesis chapter 1 
that there was nothing, there was no form, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Then the Bible says, then God said, and when God said, when God began to speak, in other words, heaven was open. And all of a sudden, creation began bursting forth because, because God started speaking and releasing words, His words. And now we find in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 3, verse 16, He, Jesus, had been baptized. And he came up immediately from where? From the water. In John's Gospel, chapter number 1, we find that Jesus is the Word. So to put it this way, then the Word of God came up from the water. And when he came up from the water, the Bible says this, And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and alighting upon him. And suddenly, watch here, you see that? Suddenly, now we have the Word, and we have the Spirit, and then suddenly, suddenly, a voice. Remember, then God said, suddenly a voice came from where? From heaven, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is my word being fulfilled. This is my word coming to pass. It was the beginning of a new era. A new beginning. In Revelation, Jesus appearing to John, the author of Revelation, and he says, Behold, I make all things new. Second, Chronicle, Second Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Are you in Christ this morning? Are you in Christ this morning? That means you're a new creation. Quit living your life based on your past, based on... Come and talk to me. Based on past experience. You now live your life based on revelation. Hallelujah. We'll get there shortly. But brothers and sisters in Christ, make a note of this. That God created. Listen, in the beginning of creation, everything was chaotic. So out of the chaos, you see like now the world appears to be in chaos. But God came out of the chaos. He created the, cos the cosmos. Out of chaos, He created the cosmos. Out of emptiness, He created fullness. Out of darkness, he created light. The Bible says, darkness was on the face of the deep. Come and talk to me, somebody. But God created the light from the darkness. So what am I trying to say to you this morning is that it doesn't matter what you went through. It doesn't matter where you are. God is more than able to create from those circumstances something new for you because he is a creator. Yeah. Hallelujah. He created order from this order. He created order. Hallelujah. And he is the, he is the one who calls those things which be not as though they actually were and they get established. So call those things that be not as though they were. You have been created in His image and likeness. You've not been created to live your life based on what you see 
or what you hear or what you feel. You've been created to live by His Word. Because by His Word we understand, we know that He created all things by His Word. Hebrews tells us, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. In John's Gospel, chapter number 1, the Bible says this, In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. Speaking of Jesus, throughout the Old Testament, from Genesis right through to the last book of the Old Testament, we hear the Word. The, come on, talk to me. The foretelling of the Word. The prophetic Word that God would send a Redeemer. God would send His Word into the world. And Jesus is the Word of God. That's the revelation that, G that John received. When you read the first book of Revelation, the same author wrote the book of Revelation. And when he begins, he says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which he revealed to his servant John. The revelation. It's a revelation of Jesus. A revelation, to have a revelation of Jesus is to have a sense of knowing who he is. Of knowing who he is. And knowing his position in all things, in all the affairs of life. Knowing his position. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made. In other words, God the Father created all things through God the Son. If you look at Colossians chapter number 1, Hallelujah. Colossians, book of Colossians, Chapter number 1 and verse 16. The Bible says, For by Him, by Jesus Christ, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. All things. I told you last week that when God gave us Jesus, He gave us His best. You know when you can, you know when you can get a, a revelation of that. That when God gave me Jesus, He gave me His best. I won't find myself at the mercy of my circumstances trying to pray for God to bless me with something in the midst of my circumstances because he's already given me the best. What more could I ever ask except if I have Jesus because when I have Jesus, I know that he is the creator. I know that all things are created through him and for him and I know, come and talk to me somebody and when I'm praying, I get to understand that whatever I'm asking for, it's not for myself. It's not to spend it on myself. It's not for me, but it is for him, for his glory, because it was all created through him and for him. Many times you're asking things from God, but really stop and pause and ask yourself the question, this thing that I'm asking God, of God, is it for me or is it for him? Are you getting what I'm saying? They were all created through him and for him. It's for him. It's for him. It's for him. It's for him. That's why our lives, we live for him. Hallelujah. We live our lives for him. The second verse of John, John 1 says, He was in the beginning with God. All things were created 
through him and without him nothing was made that was made. We find the words of Jesus. Without me, you can do nothing. So when you have Jesus, it's what a wonderful privilege. What a wonderful um, state we are in. It's a state of blessedness because he is the one who is in creation. He is the one who creates. Come on, he's made all things new. Can you see your life this morning? Not based on your past, but based on what he has done, what he has purchased at the cross. You live your life in rest. You are resting in Jesus. Resting in the finished works of the cross of Calvary. That is how we live our lives as believers. It's from a position of rest. Resting in the works that he worked, not me, but he worked. Say amen to that. Amen. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In Jesus, in the word, was Zoe, was abundant life, the God kind of life. And that life was the light of men. When you are outside of Christ, you cannot see that light because he is the true light. That true light which is coming to the world. He is the light and he is the life. So when you are in him, you experience and you, you receive and experience life. The way God would have you live it. The way God would have you experience it. And you see life through a different lens. That's why you find there's things that you will say, things that you know you will do, that you live out, that to the natural man, to the man out there, it seems foolishness. But for you, you understand because your eyes have been enlightened by the word of God, who is Christ Jesus. Psalms 36 verse number 9 says this. Says, for with you is the fountain of life. With you, with God the Father, with you is the fountain of life. In your light, in Jesus, we all see light. You see, in your light, we all see light. In Jesus, you see light. You see light in Jesus. It doesn't matter how dark the situation may see, but may appear or seem to you. But even in the midst of the darkness, you can see because you have a different lens now. You see with the eyes of the spirit and not the eyes of the flesh. You see the end from the beginning. That's why when you start your Christian journey, it doesn't matter what happens along the way. You're going to keep on walking. You're going to keep on praying. You're going to keep on praising. You're going to keep on fasting because you're living for him. In him you live. In him you move. In him you breathe. That's why when you're living and you're going through life, no matter how dark the situation may seem, you're looking to the light, the true light. Who is Jesus? The book of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus, who for the glory that was set before him, endured the cross. You're looking on the other side. When Jesus went to Calvary, oh boy, he saw the finished works of what the Father was about to do. He saw you, he saw you washed in his blood. He saw you as the righteousness of God in him. You have a different lens. That's why even in sickness you see yourself healed. In pain, you see yourself comforted. In weaknesses, you see yourself strong. Because his strength is made perfect in weakness. That's why when you glory now, 
You don't glory in yourself. You don't glory in man. But you glory in God. You glory in God who loved you so much. The God who loved you so much that he gave you. That he gave you his son. Hallelujah. That is our glory now. That is our life now. Living a life to honor him who loved us. Who freely gave himself up for us. Without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the light was the and the life was the light of men. That word light means revelation. In Jesus was life. There was nothing on the earth, beloved. We just read Genesis. There was nothing. Your life may seem that way this morning. Like there's nothing. That's why I've been sent here this morning with the word from God to you. That don't look at your nothing. But look to the one who created something from nothing. God doesn't need anything on this earth to create something. All God can release to you is a word. And he's released his word, his son Jesus. That if you can look to Jesus, because the Bible says in him, in the word, was life. And the life was the light of men. To be in Jesus is to be in this word, in this book. Genesis to Revelation. It is all about Jesus. It's all about the Son of God. If you are living in this word and you're digesting this word in your spirit, I have news for you. Something new is happening to you. You may look at your life and think that there's nothing. But let me tell you, brother, let me tell you, sister, that there's a God who's working behind the scenes. You don't have to worry. You are not a basket case. You are a God case. God is working on your case. Long before, listen, long before the circumstance approaches you, God has already worked it out. God knew, God knows what's happening in your life. All the number of your days are in his word, are in his book. You may say, I'm a pastor. You don't know. I've been diagnosed with this and this and this. Let me tell you something. God knows about it. God even knows what you're going to face next year. And God made a way out for you. And the way out is Jesus. That's why he says, if any man come and talk to me, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear me, and answer the door. I will come in with the Father and we will dine with him. He will dine with me and I will dine with him. Let me tell you when you open the door of your heart to Jesus, you let in the King of Kings, you let in the Creator of all things. And when you have him dwelling in your heart, it doesn't matter what you face, he's able to create for you. He's able to do something new for you. It doesn't matter, you may say you're a pastor, but there's a door that closed in my life. Let me tell you, it's good that that door closes because when, when one door closes, God will open another door. It doesn't matter. Quit crying about the doors that have closed in your life and praise God for the doors that are opening. You don't wait for the door to open to praise God. No, 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 no. You call those things that be not as though they were. You praise Him long before the victory. You give Him the praise. You give Him the glory. You give Him the honor. Long before you endure the test, start giving Him the testimony. Start giving the testimony. Start giving the testimony. That's the God we serve. Hallelujah. He makes all things new. This is Jesus. He came, brothers and sisters, to give us life. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm no longer the same. You're no longer the same. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
Christ, Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Christ entered the dark world. Christ entered this dark world to give it spiritual light. He entered this dark world to give it spiritual light. Spiritual light. But you are enlightened. And through that enlightenment, you shine. You shine because of that revelation. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Not the author of the Gospel of John, but John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him, all through his witness, might believe. John the Baptist was a man sent from God. Jesus is God. There's a big difference. John the Baptist was a man sent from God. Jesus is God. So, John the Baptist, the Bible says, verse 7, this man, John, came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. God is light. In him there is no darkness. Now, Jesus is God. He is the light. Now, John was sent from God to bear witness of the light. He goes on to say, he was not that light. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. John, a man, sent for his light. John, a man, sent from God. In other words, sent from light. To put it another way, John was a burning lamp from the light. There was, and his lamp was burning because it was set aflame. And he was bearing witness of the light where this flamey head came from. Are you with me now? His lamp was burning from the light, came from the light to bear witness of the light, the true light. Are you with me? He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. Jesus Christ became a man to reveal the truth to all people. In other words, how God planned for humanity to live. The things which Jesus spoke, the very words which Jesus worked, it was not the same as the rest of the world. It was a different life. It was a higher life. That even when they were faced with scarcity, he knew his 
positioning with the Father. He knew that he's a son of the Most High God, that he could take what he had and speak multiplication, and it multiplied. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When there was a storm, when there was a storm around them, he released the word of peace, and the storms obeyed. He's the light. It's those things that Jesus did which caused people to stop and question, where is this man? Even the disciples themselves had that word after the storm had been still and the, the, the waves were at, just at peace and it was just calm upon the seas. They asked this question, what manner of man is this? That even the storms and the winds obey him. Jesus. The things, listen, the way we live our lives cause people to question and say, what type of woman this is? What type of man this is? They want to see the glory of God in our lives. Come on, talk to me. This person is not moved. Come on, talk to me. I mean, the disciple came to Jesus and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And Jesus rebuked their faith. He says, Oh, you of little faith. Hallelujah. Your faith should be bubbling over. Tell your neighbor, My faith is bubbling over. Wow, that's a poor way to say it. Come on, my faith is bubbling over. Oh yeah, because when your faith is bubbling over, when those storms are blowing and those winds and those waves are beating about your boat, you just say, peace, be still. Do you know who you are? Hallelujah. Amen. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 5, Jesus speaks to us and he says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Because you've come to the true light. And now you have light. And he says, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. Let it shine so much that men may see the deeds you do and glorify your Father in heaven. Let them see. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Let them see you praying for people and things happening for people. Hallelujah. Come and talk to me, somebody. You see, my message to you, if you read Matthew 25, about the ten virgins, five of them were wise and five were foolish. My question is, are you wise or are you foolish? The thing is, you've got to keep your fire burning. You've got to keep your lamp aflame for Jesus. The work of the priest in the temple was to keep the lamp burning. They were 24-7 before the Lord, and they had to keep that lamp burning. And now let me tell you, that lamp is no longer there. That lamp is within your heart. You've got to keep it aflame. You've got to keep it aflame. It's got to be burning for Jesus. You've got to be a flame for Jesus, a light for Jesus. Say amen to that somebody. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own received him not. You see that? He came to his own and his own received him not. Instead of them making a welcome mat, he had the door shut in his face. How many of us spread out the welcome mat to Jesus? And say, Jesus, I thank you that you're going to take charge of this thing. Jesus, I thank you that you are in control of this thing. Or do we shut the door in his face? The Bible says he came to his own, his own received him not. Hallelujah. But as many as received him, as many as received, that word received means to receive with honor. It's an honorable thing when you receive Jesus. Just think of this. Come on, just pause. Think of this. The one who created 
the entire universe, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who created all things, dwells inside of me? Do you know how big that is? To have the one who created everything that you see, have him dwelling on the inside of you? What an honor. What a privilege. Oh, what an honor. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm honored. I am honored. I'm highly favored. I have the creator on the inside of me. As many as received him. Hallelujah. To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. As many as received him. Hallelujah. As many as received him. To them he gave. Oh boy. When you receive Jesus, he gives you. Oh boy. Hallelujah. Listen. Verse 16 of that chapter says, And of his fullness, of his fullness, we have all received, and grace for grace. In other words, for the believer, there is grace piled upon grace. Just go with me quickly to Exodus 33. I'll show you something. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Exodus 33. Watch from verse 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. In other words, you are telling me to take these people, but you are not telling me who is going to go with me. You find many times people want to take a step of faith, but they are more focused on how many people they have in agreement with them. Listen, let me tell you, if you have God on your side, you are already a majority. It doesn't matter how many you need. This whole world was transformed with one man, Jesus Christ. He only had 12 disciples as a result of that ministry that came from 12 people. We find today there are millions that have been saved because of the work which began with 12. A work which began with 120 in the upper room. They received the light. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. As a believer, as a child of God, you ought to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you're living, come on, your Christianity is in vain. You need the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who takes of that which belongs to Jesus and reveals it to you. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. That's why Jesus, when he spoke to his disciples, understand this, brothers and sisters. Jesus is the life and the light. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. Jesus is the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. You need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you have no power. That's how when he spoke to his disciples, he says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. You see, John was a man led of the Spirit. We, as children of God, ought to be led by the Spirit. Not our opinion. Not our thinking or reasoning. But the Holy Spirit. And the way to do that is to cultivate a life of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You must live in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But you've not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you, watch here, I know you by name. 
and you've also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And he said, that God said to Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Say amen to that. Amen. Tell your neighbor there's rest. Hallelujah. And I will give you rest. Wow, praise God. Say I'm resting. I am resting. Praise God. Watch me now. Then he said to me, I'm going on, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then, how, watch it, how then will it be made known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be, watch it, I want you to highlight this. You see, if you go with us, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of of the earth. Grace, brothers and sisters in Christ, that grace in Christ Jesus sets you apart from the rest of the world. When you find in Genesis when God created the light from the darkness, He separated the light from the darkness and He called the light day and He called the, the darkness night. And the Bible says we are children of the day. Not the night. We are children of the day. In other words, there's a distinction. There's a distinction between the people of God and the people of the world. There's a distinction. The people of God have grace working on their behalf. Grace is unmerited favor. I don't work for it. I can't earn it. It's a free gift given to me by God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Grace sets you apart. Let me share with you. In 2021, this is not yet the New Year's preaching. But in 2021, you got to get ready because God is about to make a distinction. God is about to make a distinction. God is about to set a dividing line. God is about to say, this is my people. Does he come and talk to me? When Jesus came up from the water, when the word came up from the water, there was a voice from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Let me tell you, I see in 2021, God is going to speak for you. God is going to speak for your family. God is going to speak for your children. Can you say amen, somebody? Where others said, no, you're going to close shop. No, you're not going to make it. I'm here to tell you that by God, you're going to make it. You're going to make it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. You can't give up now. You've come too far to give up now. God is with you. And he's with you in a strong way. Those who believe in his name. When it says even the, those who believe in his name. It's not referring to the name by which he is called. It's referring to what his name stands for. The Lord, my salvation. The Lord, my salvation. The Lord, my salvation. Yeshua, Jesus. That name, the name of Jesus means the Lord saves. When the angel, this is not in Christmas services message, but when the angel appeared to men, 
He says, you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people. Amen. Those who believe in his name, those who believe in his name, what his name stands for? The Lord, my Savior. We just heard Sister Dolly share with us this morning from the Chronicle. Hallelujah. In Exodus 3, verse 14, God appearing to Moses, I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. He is with you. Are you sick? He says, I am your healer. Are you weak? He says, I am your strength. I am. He says, I am whatever you want me to be, I am. That's how when you have fellowship with him. When we look at Moses was leading thousands of people, say a million Israelites, coming out of Egypt into the wilderness. Come on. The people start crying out to Moses for food. Moses didn't start panicking and saying, Oh, what are we going to do? But Moses looked to the Lord. I'm telling you this morning, look to the Lord. Don't look to the flesh. Don't look to men. Don't look to the government. Don't look to the doctors. Don't look to the lawyers. Don't look to the government. Look to the Lord. Don't look to institutions. Look to the Lord. Have fellowship with the Lord. When you look to the Lord, He'll send you the manna. When you look to the Lord, He'll bring in the quail. When you look to the Lord, He'll bring the resources. He'll bring it, He'll bring it, He'll bring it, He'll bring it. He says, I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm your provider. I am what I am. I am that I am. Who sent you? I am. That means he is with me. It's present continuous. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He says, I'll be with you even until there's no more time. I'll be with you. I'm with you to the end of the age. Who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Those who received him gave me the right to become sons of God. He says to you today, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine. Let it shine so much that men may see the deeds you do and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord Jesus, for enlightening my soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you are my wisdom. You are my peace. You are my righteousness. You are my sanctification. You are my redemption from God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. 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 Jesus. A relationship with Jesus. Relationship. Fellowship with Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, not once do you find Jesus was trying to cling on to his life to stay here. Why are we so worried about staying here? While we are here, we must work the works of him who called us. We have an eternal home. We are not homeless people. 
we have an eternal home reserved for us in heaven. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We experience things that people of this world cannot experience. I'm talking about encounters with the Spirit of God. And He'll wake you up in the midnight hour. He'll prompt you to pray. Or He'll prompt you to sing. Or He'll fill your mouth with laughter. Or He'll fill your heart with dancing and rejoicing. People in the world do not do that. He'll wake you up. You'll start dancing. People of the world, they need to be full of the wine of the world before they get courage. I mean, the man can't take out the, the garbage when the, when the municipality comes, but after he's had some wine of the world, he can, take, he can carry the whole town. When you have the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters in Christ, you become bold. You can look adversity in the face. You won't cower. You won't back down. You won't let down your guards. But you'll put on the whole armor of God. And you will fight. And you will fight. And you will fight. You will fight. After you've done all, you will stand. You will stand. You will stand. You will stand because God has put you. And God is for you. Are you hearing me, somebody? You will stand the test. Hallelujah. I'm talking about angelic encounters. Angelic encounters. Oh yeah, angels are real. Angels are real. I've had angelic encounters. I've had it. I've had it. I remember Joshua as a baby lying in the cot. Pastor Sheldon and I, we prayed and we took the prayer, the prayer shawl, we prayed with, we put it under his pillow. And I remember at night, I woke up, it was like a blue light over the cot. Blue light over the cot. I remember that, the blue light over the cot. And I heard the words, your son is healed. He was still a baby. The next morning when he woke up, he was fine, he was healed. And I mean, that happened, I'm talking about, I mean, that happened, I was in a church meeting and I got drunk with the Holy Spirit. I started laughing. I started staggering. I couldn't even get into my car. I remember the pastor saying, hey, Brother, when you get stopped by the traffic cop, he's going to catch what you got. I remember stuttering. And I got into my car. And I got home. When I got home, we started praying. And that's when we put the prayer show. And that night, an angel appeared. That's what I'm talking about. When last were you drunk with the Holy Spirit? been drunk a number of times with the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, it's so good that whoever you touch, they receive. We had a service in Durban one day. I couldn't get out of the service. I was like glued to the carpet. And one of the pastors, when he came, that went with us, he came and he tried to take me now to the combi that was waiting for us to go home. And as he picked me up, he got drunk too. And he got stuck too. And there's the two of us stuck. Then someone else tried to come and take it. They got drunk too. Eventually we made it into the combi. Man, everybody in the combi got drunk. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When last? That's something the world doesn't experience. And praise God, you know, even when you sober up, you don't need what they call a left marker because you've got it already. And it's free, you don't pay for it, it's free. That's the life God has for us. 
There's so much to this life, this Christian life. There's so much that Christ has offered himself up for. Maybe take it lightly. But there's so much that you can enjoy on earth. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why wait for the day you die and pass on from this life to the afterlife to enjoy heaven when you can enjoy it here already? You can start enjoying it here. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. That's the life we have. Hallelujah. It's grace, pile upon grace, pile upon grace. When doors are closing to the world, doors are opening to you. Though the door may close to you, it is for your good. God knows why He allowed the door to close. But you've got to trust God. You just got to believe God. But there's a better door. Look to the open door. The open door is Jesus. Look to Jesus. Don't look at situations. Don't look at circumstances. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Because when you have Jesus, you have all you will ever need for life. When you have Jesus, you are set for life. You with me? yourself playing a machine to determine your destiny. Zama Zama Zosetama, no, they won't set you up. They set you up for the biggest disaster of your life. I'm talking about Lotto. Lotto does not control my destiny. The gambling machine at the casino does not control my destiny. Nor does it determine my destiny. Nor does it make me who I am. Yeah. See, when the people of the world, when they see our 
our sisters. They say, my, 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 my.
speak blessing over them. How many of us here are parents? Quickly, I just feel this in my spirit. Parents. How many of us parents here are children of Mary or would like them to get married and we are trusting God? Just raise your right hand. The children of Mary, trusting God. Just keep your right hand raised up. Just keep it up like that. You see, when in a wedding ceremony, that's why it's important for a child to receive a blessing from the parent. Many times you find when a child goes against that blessing, you find the marriages go, you understand, a lot of turmoil. You with me now? So that's why that blessing is so important. And I want you to understand, when you pronounce blessing over your children, they will be blessed. Their marriages will be blessed. Their families will be blessed. So let's just say this with me. My children are blessed. Their spouse is blessed. Their children are blessed. Their children's children are blessed. I speak blessing. I speak life. I speak peace over my children, over their marriages, over their homes, over their family. In the name of Jesus. I release blessing and I release favor now in Jesus' name. Amen. It's done. 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 It is done. I'm telling you from experience. I know from experience. It is done. This great blessing. Great blessing that you receive from a parent or parent in law. This great blessing. You receive that blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Come on, let us stand. I trust you got something today. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come on, we're just going to spend about a minute just praying it out of the time. A minute of prayer. Let's just pray.
this life, do this peace. Your blessed name. Father, I pray for your people wherever they are. I release your grace upon this house. I release your grace upon your people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. Cover your people, Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ, your son. Be the blood upon them, Lord. I decree, Lord, no sickness, no disease, no virus to fasten itself to their bodies. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, to bring your people, Lord, to speedy recovery in the name of Jesus. Those who have lost things in life, oh God, those who have lost joy, those who have lost strength, those who have lost, oh Lord, their peace, in the name of Jesus, I pray that their lives be restored, that their joy be restored, that their peace be restored. Anything that the enemy has stolen from them, that it be restored. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. We are complete in Christ Jesus. We are complete in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Now may the Lord God Almighty bless you, keep you. May he cause you to prosper. May he cause you to be exceedingly fruitful in the land that he has given you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you and your loved ones, both now and forevermore, in Jesus' magnificent name. And the people of God said, Amen, 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the life giver. He is the life giver. That's the word that comes to mind now. He's the life giver. Anything that you consider to be dormant in your life, He's the life giver. Hallelujah. You give it to Him, He'll resurrect it. I say He'll resurrect it. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, yeah.